slide here that shows all the different systems that you may have on site, your ERP, your ADMs, your LDS, uh, internet, hardware, different data capture systems. And so really the goal of SAP Support Integration Manager is to deliver this entry, integration across this enterprise. And the benefit of the conditions you can give you a number of benefits really. The most obvious is your transcription error. That's the, the first one. It will uh, your data quality, your data integrity, uh, and also, quite, quite, quite handy, it will, it will collate all data from all these systems to a single repository. And so then you can do different data, data analytics on that within your site. Okay, so integration manager is a concept. Well, we have system A and system B, the two external systems. I mean, the goal of integration manager is to take <coughs> take the integration away from these two systems, we don't want to have to make uh, considerable changes to either system A or system B. We want the integration to be outside of that and easily, easily configured. So that's what integration manager does. So you have system A, which has um, typically a proprietary data format, so it's the format A, system B will have its own data format. But what integration manager will do is it will take the data format from system A, transform it into a common system neutral format, which typically would be, um, say, XML or YAML perhaps. And then once it's in that format, we have a, we have a structured system neutral format, which can be transformed uh, into the native format of any other system you want to, you want to receive. So you'll have an input transform and an export transform. So that's the general concept of integration manager. So how do we form connections? to all these different systems. Well, in the integration manager, we have what's known as agents. And an agent will allow you to connect. A number of, uh, an agent will allow you to connect a specific type of connection. We have a file agent, which will allow you to import and export files from a specific location, perhaps an internet file server. Yeah, a remote agent, which works in conjunction with your file agent in the cases where maybe you have an import location and a remote agent can be used in conjunction with the file agent, a remote network location. And a COM port, so I'm not very loud. <laughs> so a COM port for a, a simple COM port instrument where you have a single resource path back on an RS-232 serial connection. And we then have a workflow agent which is new to implement our integration manager 3.1. And, and this uh, this utilizes uh, Microsoft Windows Workflow Foundation, which allows you to um, essentially build a process. And so rather in, with, with the Comport uh, integration where you have a single associated path, uh, with the workflow you can actually build a conversation between your instrument and integration manager. And so it will trigger a certain reaction, a certain activity. We have the SQL agent, which, en which enables Connection to databases, to uh, <coughs> connect to Oracle, SQL Server, or Control VDC. Uh, form agents are, use, are useful um, in the case of an integration where there's some data missing perhaps from an instrument that the user must enter for it to be transferred to another system. A form will prompt the user for that information. So, for instance, on an instrument, uh, on an instrument integrated with SQL, you could prompt the user for sample number. So there's a, there's a hierarchical, hierarchical structure in integration manager where the agent has an integration point. And an integration point essentially, um, I, should, uh, I should say really, um, I'm just going to discuss the technical benefits of integration manager first. If you, if you think this is a bit technical at the moment, then I'll discuss a couple of cases after that, which will be examples before we go out of orbit. So this is a bit technical at the moment, but 
just to say that there's an integration point which connects to, uh, which especially mm -hmm. represents a system uh, within sample manager. And we, for, for each system, connecting one integration point to another forms an interface. And in each integration point, you can have what's known as integration point objects, uh, which will have an import, there'll be an import of x1 um, RTO, and this will form a bidirectional interface. So here you'll see each system has two integration points both those integration point objects, we can form transforms. So what kind of transformation can we do, and how can we do this? So we have three different types of transforms, structured to unstructured, uh, unstructured to structured, and structured to unstructured. So unstructured generally is, is a, a text of CSV, an RTS file, things like that, and uh, an unstructured format would be XML. And this again is just an example of that to a common object format of XML, <coughs> and then we can transform that into any uh, proprietary format of the destination system. So here we have an XML to XML transformation to a LinsML format, which is the proprietary format for sample manager. And this is just a, a look at the managed transformation screen in IM, screen in IM. Uh, and the reason I wanted to show you this is just to, to demonstrate the versioning <coughs> so you can have multiple versions of these transformations, and the active version is what is the one which we're really using. So it makes it makes managing a transformation uh, quite easy. You can check them in, check them out, create new versions, activate, and you can see the, the interface there that the um, transformation was aided by the active one. So you have, there you see the, the three the three different types: file to XML, XML to file. Okay, so this is a, what looks like a complicated screen, but it's the transformation script designer. And really what I just want to demonstrate is it looks quite complicated, but it has, uh, a, a, it actually can be quite easy to understand when you break it down. And so we have the, this is for a text XML, I should say, so there's three different screens, one for each uh, transfer, transform step. So on the top left, we have the input format, which here is the CSV file. On the top right, we have the output format, which is a basic XML file. And then on the bottom left, we have the command script that's used to transform one file to the other. And you'll notice here I've, a I've added the, the right-click option, which is a pop. I don't know if you can see that, it actually says all of build fields. And so for a very simple transformation, you can actually use an all of build function that will do all this, this that will create this transformation for you. And that's available on text XML transform. There's also a new feature of importing and exporting a transformation. So if you've already created a transform for one instrument, say, and you have another instrument that's quite similar, you can export the uh, the um, first one, the first transformation, and export it, and uh, just make a minor modification. We have XML to text. So again, you see on the top left we have import, import on the top right we have uh, the output format. What I wanted to show here was just the uh, the test functionality. So you can debug and test these um, transformations without actually having to have any instrument connection or system connection, depending on what you're interested in here. And on the bottom left hand side, you'll see we have the, the output or the, uh, the result of the transformation. And the final one is XML to XML. So what I just wanted to highlight on this screen is the fact that you can use XS. XSLT to do the transform. So in this case, we don't actually have to write a command script at all. If you're familiar with the use of XSLT, and uh, you can transform your XML to XML quite simply. Okay, so that's the transform design. So another good feature about integration management is the ability to monitor your transactions, view agent status, and essentially have uh, transparent view, uh, transparent view transparency into how data is transferring from one system to the other. Here, so the screen we have here, again, is from IM administration time, and this is the uh, agent status screen. So you see it follows the same hierarchical structure. We have agent, uh, integration point, integration point object, and then we create the status of all these objects, and we also allow you to manage the status of the agent. So if you click on one agent at the top, you can Log file, and then it will display you the log file that's just in the bottom right hand corner. So it's very
very easy to monitor the, monitor the, uh, the activity of your agent. There's a second tab here for interfaces. So an interface, again, is the connection between the two systems. One integration point connected to another integration point. And, and this will display each interface for you and allow you to process commands at the bottom of the one. Another very useful screen is the, um, the, uh, the transaction status. So for any issue, for any data that's transferred from one system to another within the integration manager, you can see that you can see the complete transaction status of that. So you'll see you have transaction status on the right hand side there, complete, complete error process. And it'll give you a unique transaction ID for each of them. And it'll also let you know what transfer is you use within that, within that transaction. In the bottom pane, you'll see it'll show you the import and export integration point ID. And if you actually click on the show data, it will display you, it will display to you the file structure that was either imported or exported from that system. So this makes troubleshooting um, very, very easy. Okay, so now just to get to a couple of cases um, from where we've done all this. First is the metal testing laboratory. And this is a, this is a one way instrument integration with camera management. So the number of instruments that I like. On the left-hand side here, we have the, the instruments that were integrated, NCCOES, CubeMIOR, and Aspark OES. And these produce their own uh, unique uh, file format. So we have three CSVs and an RCS. So integration manager, uh, within the integration manager, a file agent is used to pick up each of these, each of these different file types in different locations. So each of these file types will have their own integration point object, their own import integration point object. And this is transformed into a common XML format. So we have, from this point on, we have every, we have all file types in one file format once the transform is complete. Then using the sample manager agent in, 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 within the integration manager, uh, we could trans we could transform these results <coughs> directly to the sample manager. <coughs> And this result, is, this, this requires zero um, modification to the sample manager. Uh, it only requires consideration of the, the link and the activities which are already there. Okay, so this is an example of the one that we um, that we carried out. And just to get a look at the transformations that were done during that process, we set out with an RCS instrument file here. To our common XML format, and then finally to our, uh, our link to now format, which contains all the commands and results from the instruments that are actually carried out to the sample manager. So you might be able to see that it's just a simple second command. Uh, our second case is with the uh, facility management system. So we're integrating this with sample manager. Here we have a facility system, our integration manager, and our sample manager. And we have this uh, facility API, which is a, an application product interface. So the facility management uh, system came with this product interface that enabled writing and reading of results. So how this interface works was a, a sample would be pulled within this facility management system. The API would get these codes using a set code system. Integration manager would then pick up this uh, proprietary XML format, transform it to its common format, and then transfer that onto the sample manager agent. And in sample manager, this would log samples and jobs to find tests based on the, the, the samples that came in the facility system. And this is a bi-directional interface. So once results were entered in sample manager and approved, an SQL agent would then pick up, would then pull sample manager for all approved samples, all approved facility samples within a given time range, transform that to the <coughs> facility um, XML format, split the API and draw results from the would then pick up that file and update the results.
saw it quite up here at the logging of monitoring. So you saw it within our IM, you have um, the agent status monitor and you have the transaction monitor. Uh, but also within this process, we have log files on the sample manager side and also on the facility API side. So there's extensive logging and, and uh, transaction monitoring across this process. Again, similar to the previous slide. example of um, some of the uh, instruments that were integrated at Shell, just to give you an idea of the, um, the variety, um, chromatography systems, analyzers, installations, receives. So there is a, it's very varied in what's being integrated. Okay, so just to recap then on the benefits of the uh, integration manager, elimination of transcriptional errors, correlation of data, um, <coughs> increase the increase of connectivity. So not only does it might it transfer data faster, but it also frees up time for analysis to do other uh, more critical task tasks perhaps, perhaps. Increase consistency, quality and integrity of results. And also enables complete data overview. Again, integration manager is correlation of That's the integration manager. Is there any questions? Yes, please. In, um, in terms of, say, the, the intermediate file system, is this, how, how are companies handling that? That means you have your file from your instance, and then you have your intermediate file that you've created, mm -hmm. and then you also have your so How do people treat that intermediate state? <coughs> well, the intermediate isn't actually a file. It's what's called a common object. In manager. An integration manager comes with its own database. So this is this is stored as part of the system. It doesn't require any other repository outside of that. And uh, it's not actually part of itself. Yeah. It saves it in the system. It, it sta saves it in integration manager. Do, do you have access to the file in the integration manager? Modify anything in the file in the integration manager? No, you can't. You can't. The, the only way to modify is There is security built in, uh, into the integration manager, so there's an admin user and there is a, a base user. So only the admin user would have access to, to make those kind of modifications. There's, a, there's no way to um, modify anything within the integration manager externally. There's no external file for that. So they're they're running in the background and they're running they're um, they're independent of each other also. So if one service was to be stopped, it would have no impact on any other agent that's running on the system. Okay. So every agent which is running is independent of the other. So they can be controlled outside the integration manager. Yeah. There's two um, interfaces for integration manager. There's what's called the service manager and the administration. The service manager allows you to manage the, um, the agents, and the integration manager allows you to configure the integration. Uh, you could also uh, configure from uh, Windows Service Manager to all the starting software system. Yeah? Um, so can integration manager be used uh, to transfer data across operating Also, could it be used to um, to to work legacy data? For uh, example, to upgrade legacy data to a say, say a newer version of Windows. Yeah, well, it can be used to transfer data across networks. So that's not a problem. And the second question uh, can it be used to upgrade data? Yeah. Well, let's say you've got legacy data from a very old instrument, for example. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, maybe CSV or something like that. Yeah. Um, but the data, is it, but it's, it's not coming from an instrument, it's coming from uh, maybe stored data or something like yeah. that. Yeah, 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 absolutely. You can, uh, you can do a, a CSV transform to transform that into your, into 
your uh, used walnut and, and import it to whichever system? What kind of system would you be importing that into? Sorry? What kind of system would you want to import that data into? Oh, well, let's say if you wanted to in, in import it into a Yes, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. But uh, 